So another question came in from uh, Leo on Facebook, and he wanted to know about get out the vote efforts and what you have learned, what DFA has learned about get out the vote efforts in various parts of the country. Uh, are they different in different parts of the country, or are there some constants that we can use anywhere? Well, there are some differences depending on where you're in the country because obviously some door knocking and stuff is harder to do in locations where people are massively spread out. But it, in some ways, uh, getting people to the polls is uh, even more important in those places, but you do it by car where you're literally driving people in. Uh, I would say two of the biggest things that we've learned through the years that are sort of universal everywhere. Uh, one is um, peer pressure. Um, Nothing gets people to vote more than when friends say they've gone to vote and ask them, are you going to go vote, or when friends vote together, uh, or when they find out, when a, a voter finds out that others in their neighborhood are voting but they haven't voted. Uh, um, you know, one of the, we've, test after test has shown that if you send people a card that, that shows in the last election, uh, this neighbor voted, this neighbor voted, but you didn't. Uh, that that gets people uh, to go, oh, i got to do my civic duty, i got to get out and vote. Uh, so those are some of sort of the more um, unique uh, but also kind of cutting-edge things that can be done. Uh, so anything that, can, that, that, that improves the peer pressure, um, you know, we did a, a pretty cool Facebook thing um, and uh, that actually was cool enough in 2008 that I, I think it was, you know, I, I've never heard this from Facebook, so I may be over uh, crediting ourselves. But you know, Facebook followed through in doing a version that was very similar to what we pushed in 2012 after we'd pushed it in 2008. Uh, that was fantastic. That helped create this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, pressure to get people to go. And the second biggest nice. thing that can be done, and this is something that we need to do all around the country, and that is is a, making it very easy for people to vote at home. You know this from Washington. Uh, voting at home dramatically increases uh, voter turnout. Uh, you know, I remember when they implemented it in uh, Oregon, first off, one of the, the great studies, and I'm, I'm now going to, don't quote me on these exact numbers because I'm going to make them up, uh, but they are really close to the real numbers, okay? Uh, I just don't remember what the actual numbers were. But so, for example, if, if it was, you know, 24% higher turnout after the bill passed, the, the dirty little secret for uh, progressives is that 17% of those were Democrats. Uh, so when we, when we get people to vote at home, not only are we increasing voter particip participation significantly, we're also significantly increasing the turnout among progressives uh, and Democrats across the board. So I really, really want to pressure that if you live in a state that doesn't have a uh, vote at home, you should be advocating for it. Or if you live in a state that has absentee validating voting, um, you know, you should take advantage of it. And a lot of states have that, and you should do it. Yep. Well, we've got a number of other questions, but we only have about 10 minutes, and I wanted to give you plenty of time to respond to this one. Um, so we may have to um, hold off on the other questions until the next time we do this, or maybe do a, uh, a follow-up. But one of the things that DFA was involved in was Netroots Nation this year. And you had a situation where the Black Lives Matter activists took the stage, and they raised quite a ruckus. You posted a very powerful and articulate article to the DFA leaders list about what lessons DFA has learned. And so I wanted to have you give you an opportunity to talk about what your reaction was um, to having the activists take the stage in Phoenix and how have you worked as DFA to engage with Black Lives Matter with, with the community um, thanks to their giving us white liberals a good slap down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, I want to, you know, I think I should start by saying Black Lives Matter is uh, a classic example of um, a, a decentralized movement where people are organically uh, organizing together under a, a concept or, or a few policy thing, concepts that they want. And, and what that means is that when you have a decentralized movement like Occupy Wall Street or like, honestly, the beginnings of the Howard Dean campaign when uh, DFA members started on their own, uh, Dean for America members, rather, started on their own organizing on Meetup and, and uh, you know, the campaign was only focused on Iowa and New Hampshire at first and suddenly uh, all over the country, including like in Miami where I was from, we started organizing on our own. 
what that means when you do that is it means that not everything that people do are going to be um, not everybody's going to agree on it. Uh, there's no one to hold accountable for uh, for poor choices, uh, for non-strategic tactics. Um, and, but it also means that you get uh, uh, you get an authentic movement. You get a movement that's really driven by real passion and real power. Uh, and I think that's what we're really seeing in the Black Lives Matter movement. And it's 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 exciting. Um, it, it does mean that occasionally they're going to uh, do things that that are uh, uncomfortable. Um, and occasionally they're going to piss off their own allies. Um, and sometimes that'll be smart strategically, and sometimes it'll be a mistake. Um, and uh, and that's where that's where I think it leads us to Netrunner's Nation, where I want to say that that was extremely smart. It went really well, and here's why it was so powerful. Um, you know, what it was a forum that included Martin O'Malley, and then Bernie was coming on second, and. Uh, they came out while Martin O'Malley was speaking, and Martin O'Malley had already flubbed some terrible answers, in my opinion, uh, to questions on police brutality and uh, and especially on his leadership when he was the mayor of Baltimore. Uh, and I think basically what happened is that these organizers had had enough, and uh, so they got up and they they sort of um, you know a, a large group. It wasn't it wasn't like three or four hecklers. It wasn't just uh, two people like it was in Seattle. It was several. Do- it was probably two dozen people got up, marched up the stage, and they held basically a demonstration. They occupied the room. Uh, it was it was basically the political convention equivalent of uh, of shutting down a freeway. Um, what they did is they shut down the whole event for an imp- an impromptu demonstration of their point, and their point was. Sandra Bland had just been murdered, uh, or at least had died in her jail, jail cell after being pulled over for not using a turn signal. Uh, these women were very upset because this is a classic. Sandra Bland was educated. She was going to a great job. She doesn't fit this stereotype, this, this, this Mike Brown uh, stereotype they sell of the thug that is dangerous that may have just robbed a store. Uh, she was on her way to a job. She is an educated woman, and she got pulled over for a tail light, and she's dead three days later. Uh, they have every right to be pissed off, to be upset, because this isn't Sandra Bland isn't alone. This happens all the time, way, way too often in America. And that's what they were demonstrating over. They got there. They said, say her name. Say the name of the people that have died in police custody. And they made. Uh, they, they took turns. Um, you know, standing up and saying, uh, uh, the women got up on this chair and they would say, uh, if I die in police custody, I did not commit suicide. Uh, I will never commit suicide. Then one got off and the next one got up and said, if I die in police custody, uh, uh, tell my kids I did it for them. I'm trying to make a better future for them. Uh, next person got up and said, if I die in police custody, I want you to burn this place down. Uh, it was extremely powerful. It was... Uh, important and it really meant something uh, and it was a, it was a way to hold the room that wasn't just standing around and chanting one slogan it was a way to hold the room that engaged people and made you think and forced you to think because they wouldn't move uh, and they would make their statement and then they would give a chance for Martin O'Malley to answer and then he would blow it and they would come back with another version with the next step in the campaign. Uh, uh, so it was really intense. And then Martin O'Malley got off the stage and Bernie got on. And I'll tell you, it was disappointing. Uh, I really wanted to see Bernie, who I knew is the best candidate on this issue, who uh, sh- this should be right in his wheelhouse, you know, came out. And he honestly, he basically treated them like hecklers. He tried to ignore them. He tried to speak over them. You know, ironically, he was there saying, uh, we need a revolution in this country while a revolution was standing right next to him begging for his help. Uh, and and so that was very frustrating and, and it was hard. What's exciting to see is I think that it, it worked. Uh, it really woke a lot of people up, including Bernie, and made it so that Bernie has got a better platform now than he had before when it comes to issues of taking on structural racism uh, in this country and uh, demilitarizing our police. He was already there, but uh, it, this, this new program's better. The criminal justice reform, uh, you know, getting rid of, uh, you know, it, you know, 
taking, getting rid of mandatory sentencing and, uh, and, and, and the mass incarceration we do in this country. Uh, he has done such a better job since then. So the, even Bernie alone is a great example of what Black Lives Matter has done. But they've done it with more than Bernie, and that's the key. They've made this become part of the national dialogue. They've made it be something that we're all discussing. And the reality is we need to talk about it because um, we do live in a society that is white-led and white-led in such a way that impacts people uh, of color uh, constantly, consistently throughout this country in an unequal, very negative fashion, that, and especially for black people who are seeing themselves die over and over again in communities around this country for things like shopping in a store or uh, you know, you know, pulling over for uh, without putting on their turn signal. Yeah. Well... I want to thank you, Charles. We've we've hit about an hour, and uh, we want to continue this uh, later. Um, but we wanted to keep this show to an hour. Uh, we I definitely will be on the phone with you or on Hangouts again later. Uh, this has been a great conversation and a great start to this series. Um, to Thanks everybody so much for who's me, watching, Chad. you bet. Glad glad to glad to have you on. Uh, and I know that DFA has about a million members out there, so I know that. Uh, your team has already shared the fact that we had this conversation on Facebook, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next one and looking forward to uh, seeing DFA very active in 2015 and 2016. Great, Chad. And let me um, just leave with one last thing, which is that if you're out there, you support Bernie, work your butt off for him. He needs your support. He needs you to work as hard as you can uh, to try to help him get elected because that's how he'll win, uh, and that's how he'll do things like win the endorsement of DFA members. Uh, and so I really want to encourage you, if that's who you support, do everything you can to help them win. That's what we're doing. Cool. All right, and to everybody else, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. It will continue. Uh, DFA, while only about 12 years old, has already proven itself to be a major player in the identification, the encouragement, and the election of progressive candidates all over the country at every level, like Charles said, from dog catcher to president. There are a lot of other organizations out there, and I hope to be able to bring them to you. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let us know on our Facebook page, on our Twitter account. If you are a member or a leader in an organization and you would like to uh, go onto a hangout like this, get in touch and I'll put you on my list. Not a problem. Uh, if you have questions that we didn't cover or comments about this, uh, this show will be going from a live version to an archived version and you'll be able to watch it and we'll be, we'll be watching the comments. Uh, so please post those questions and comments below on the vid on the comment section. Um, and like Charles says, we have a, wa a lot of work to do to rebuild this democracy, but we can do it. Like Bernie says, by working together, we can do anything. So let's stand together. Thanks, everybody. And, John, you can cut. Thank you much. Well, thanks, well, thanks Chad. I think I'll do that. <laughs>